One of my favorite programs over the first year of Restore Belize has been the AMD Scholarship Fund. This program offered the opportunity to high schoolers who would not have been able to go back to get the opportunity to attend the school of their choice. What I really like about this program is the fact that it offers this opportunity not to the students who have gotten the best grades in their class, but students who just have a need that would have foregone the opportunity to go to high school just based on their inability to provide financially. After addressing some of the immediate issues affecting the communities, Restore Belize embarked on a crafting strategic plan that would clearly map out those comprehensive strategies and actions that would result in the change of living standards in the communities. With support from UNICEF, this process began last year. What we have been able to do in partnership with Restore is to really bring together all of those programs, all of the stakeholders, all of that energy and coordination that Restore brings to the South Side and help to place it in one strategic document that enables all stakeholders at all levels to be able to clearly articulate what exactly is their role, what direction we're trying to head, what is the impact that we're trying to have. Um, at the beginning, um, there were many positive programs which we saw that they were impacting the ecology, in particular of the South Side, at different levels. Um, we saw that there were programs targeting um, children and adolescents at the level of the home, of the at the level of the community, at the level of the school. Um, as you're aware, it's very important that if if you're trying to make an impact on, on children and adolescents' lives, you need to be addressing their issues at all levels, the home, the school, and the community. We saw that Restore was making a very good move at trying to make sure that all of those were addressed at all levels. And so what UNICEF um, is partnering with them in, especially where our strength lies, is to bring all of that together so that we could clearly see the impact that the program is ha having. We're able to document the impact and we're able to measure the impact. And I think that has been the strength of the partnership um, between UNICEF and Restore. The process included special meetings with key stakeholders that came together to contribute to the action plan that would bring about the result expected. Anthropologist Dr. Herbert Gale was a co-facilitator of this process. The strategic planning process for Restore Belize has been a very involved process. Right? It, it started out with trying to figure out really what is the crux of the matter. Um, what we see every day really is the murders and the shooting on the street. But if you think about it, we can't just address the murder and the violence we see on the street. What we learned is in going through the process of developing the strategic plan is that there's a lot more going on. What we're seeing is kind of the end result. So similar to a volcano that has a lot going on underneath before it erupts, we had to take a step back. <coughs> look at what then is contributing to all the murders that we see happening on the streets of Belize. The end result was a plan built on three pillars. These pillars are human development. Human development encompasses the entire life cycle of the human being from the womb to adulthood. So this includes the provision of education services, uh, welfare services, uh, culture, recreation, health services, everything that a human being would require to live a healthy, productive life with dignity. The, the second pillar is governance and citizen security or what you might call the state, the functioning of the state. So it is imperative that the state is a credible force and that it is effective in maintaining law and order. 
So under this pillar, we have to look at the security operations. And security here includes policing, as well as immigration and customs and the Belize Defense Force. All of these are the machinery of the state which enables the government to maintain law and order. The third pillar of the strategic plan is the economic development and citizen prosperity pillar. This is extremely important because when we consider all the actions in human development that go towards preparing a person for productive citizenship. We talk about education, we talk about skills training, we talk about alternative education, you know, back to school programs, apprenticeship programs. We have to have an economic opportunity at the end of that road. That road cannot end when you receive a diploma. There has to be something after that so that we complete the path. And so with, with this focus, we are going to be looking at specific opportunities to help those families that are most in need. So whereas, yes, under the human development actions, we have to ensure that families have the necessary health, education, and where necessary welfare services to ensure that they can live with dignity and that the basic needs are met. In the long term, we have to consider what is our country going to do for long-term development. And this is where we have to look at specific business opportunities that are suitable for people living in different conditions and people with different skills and talents. So we want to bring economic opportunities to those sectors of society where there's a lot of unemployment. The plan is dependent on support from the partners. I wondered about how these key players felt about the strategic plan. Seeing this draft strategy plan has really given me the greatest encouragement that I have had in relation to the crime problem in Belize. I think that it paints a path that is positive, even though it's going to be a difficult path for us to ultimately gain some major control over this problem that is bedeviling us. I am most enthusiastic with the third pillar, the last pillar. That portion that, that shows from all the input that we are doing through all the, the ministries, how it will culminate and become a revenue generating machine as, as I could call it and if that happens we will see increasing jobs for different um, demographics in our community that in itself will see a growth in citizens integrity in their confidence the way they see themselves and as a result they will look at their community in a different light. Okay. So I do believe that the, that the strategy will be a powerhouse. A number of the interventions that we are doing, the results of those inter interventions um, may not happen within a month or two time. A great deal of them are long term. However, the immediate um, sort of look forward that I can see is a reduction in, a, in the number of homicides, gang-related activities, the amount of gun incidents that we have on, in our streets. We have a, a plan that is designed to address gangs, guns, homicides, and even corruption within our department. And I'm hoping that the, the, the results of our interventions for those areas will be in the short term and not necessarily long term. 
For us at UNICEF, um, it has been really exciting partnering with Restore. Um, we have seen Restore grow a lot. Um, especially in terms of the programs and its strategic direction over the year. Um, UNICEF has been involved from its very inception at varying levels, um, but in recent times we have been more involved with RESTORE in terms of supporting um, the development of RESTORE's strategic plan. Well, um, internally we have reviewed the strategic document um, thoroughly. Um, we are very pleased. We think it is definitely a very positive um, document. It sets very clear targets. It identifies various stakeholders and it brings everybody to the table. It provides a space for all stakeholders to come to the table and make their unique contribution, whether it be at the level of the community or at the national level where planning and and the strategic direction takes place. So we definitely see that it, it really provides this template for improved coordination and I think that is the strength that Restore brings because in the past um, many, many partners have been doing great work but the coordination is what I think this document represents, the opportunity to bring people to the table and enhance the coordination. And so I think in terms of Restore Belize, it's a good step in that we have seen in the um, year that you have been working that we have found a space where um, things have been um, working together and people have been dialoguing and so for that effort alone it's a it's a move in the right direction in the strategic plan under the human development pillar the national plan of action will be supported and I think it speaks to two things um, it speaks to the fact that restore understands that if they are to really change the lives of our Belizean people and, and the whole crime and violence situation, that they will have to ultimately change the lives of families and children. And so it speaks also to their understanding of the fact that rights issues are really at the root level and the root causes of a lot of our, our problems. And so we welcome the partnership because definitely at the, um, the district level, there needs to be a translation of all of our um, commitments to the everyday people and the plan will afford that. Working with Restore Belize we've had a lot of, um, we've been able to implement here in Belize City a lot of the programs that we already had especially for the Community and Parent Empowerment Program. When it comes to the parenting program that we have more people have gotten to know about it and are asking more about it. We've had um, our mentorship program as well that's starting in different communities and um, our roving caregivers program. On part of human services, thanks to Restore Belize, more people have been able to learn about and know about the different services that the department has to offer and how they can access it.